John the Baptist said, prepare the way. And so, dear church, how do we prepare our minds for worship? We silence the inner critic. We let go of busy thoughts. We make space for God to speak. How, dear church, do we prepare our hearts for worship? We bless all emotions. We feel what we feel. We open ourselves up to be moved. How, dear church, do we prepare our bodies for worship? We take in the scents, sights, and feel of the space around us. We breathe in God's mercy. We breathe out God's love. How, dear church, do we prepare our souls for worship? We bring our full selves into this time. We wear our hearts on our sleeves. We trust that even now, wherever we are, God is here. Dear church, what we practice in worship, we live out in our daily lives. So prepare the way and let us worship together. Amen. I dream of a United States that someday will not be so divided. I dream of a day when it will be safe for all of us to gather in church again. I dream of a time when I can be back in my music room with all my students and we're singing at the top of our lungs and playing instruments together. I dream of the day that we can all come to worship together and share in God's glorious love around the cross of brokenness. I dream of conversations across party lines. I dream of more bridges and fewer walls. I dream of more laughter and less fear. I dream of more listening and fewer tears. But most of all, I dream of peace like a river. And so today, we light the candle of peace. May it remind us that there is another way. Amen.
Join me as we pray together the prayer of confession and hear again the assurance of God's forgiveness. Holy God, I wish that peace was something I could buy. I wish that peace could be ordered in a subscription service, found on a map, downloaded in an app, or voted for on a ballot. I wish that peace was as easy as a one-time choice when I was feeling my best. So today I confess with this community of faith that I need your help in this Advent season. Prepare the way for greater peace and teach me how to be part of it. May God forgive you. May God's guiding hand surround you. May you know comfort. May you know peace. Thanks be to God. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with our whole lives. Through Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading, Isaiah 41, 1 through 11. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill will be made low. The uneven ground shall become plain and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice cries out, and I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers. The flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the fall flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. Hi friends, it's Psalm 85 today. Listen to this, justice is kissing peace. Mwah. There's gonna be a wedding. <laughs> On the second Sunday of Advent, we hear about harmony between sky and earth. 
and a unity between God's way and the world's way. It might remind us of when we pray the Lord's Prayer, the Jesus Prayer. We pray, God, thy will be done on earth, just like in heaven. Your part goes like this. Heaven and earth will meet and marry. Heaven and earth together. Heaven and earth will meet and marry. Heaven and earth together. It's a wedding song. Try that with me.
The second reading, 2 Peter 3, 8 through 15a. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud voice, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness? Waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be, Thanks God. be to God. God of peace, we must admit there are a million things on our minds. We would like to be as focused as John the Baptist, preparing the way, gathering the crowd, spreading the word of your arrival. Maybe then we'd know peace. However, more often than not, we are a swirling compilation of grocery lists, text messages, emails, and over-referenced to-do lists. So today, we ask for your help in preparing the way. Could you start with our ears and then maybe move to our hearts? We'd like to hear you more clearly. Maybe then we'll know peace. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. The first reading from the Gospel of Mark in the year of Mark. From the first chapter, the first eight verses, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. He's the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord make his path straight. Now John the baptizer appeared. He appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I've baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, grace and peace be unto you from God our Father, through the saving power of our Lord Jesus Christ and the wonderful yet mysterious presence of God's Holy Spirit. Amen. My name is Jim Ahrens and I serve as Bishop of the La Crosse Area Synod. I'm in my last month of office after serving 12 years and a few months. It's my honor to bring you the word for today. But first of all, let me bring you the promise of prayers 
from our Synod staff as we gather weekly, remembering you in this strange COVID Advent Christmas season, where nothing is going to feel like it usually feels. But hopefully, the Spirit of God will bring the baby Jesus into our hearts and minds, reminding us that that light of Jesus shines in the darkness, in the craziness, in the neediness, and hopefully, 10 years down the line, we'll be looking back and saying, remember that COVID Christmas? It was different, but we were blessed. Thank you for all you're doing to help that happen. Thank you for your support of your pastors and your other leaders in your congregation as they seek to make sure that Christ is proclaimed the good news of Jesus Christ as Mark begins. The good news in that passage begins with the introduction of another character. I'm starting to pack up my office. It feels very bittersweet. I'm 68 years old and I'm looking forward to the retirement world. But at the same time, everything in my office reminds me of something, usually someone and some ministry moment. On the top shelf of my bookcase, there was an icon. You know icons, those religious paintings where the faces look flat, there's no attempt to round them out, and almost always the characters have a halo, and there's usually gold trim. They come from the Orthodox tradition. A number of years ago, I was attending a workshop on spirituality. And one of our speakers was an Eastern Orthodox monk who was an icon iconographer, someone who makes icons. He talked to us about how Jesus comes to us through art, through the proclamation that happens in the visual world. And in part of his conversation, he said, and when you get an icon, Get one because it speaks to you. Get one because it calls to you. Of course, he had some icons with him. I wasn't in planning to purchase, but one did speak to me. It called to me. It had a wild-haired Jesus with the halo with the glow of God's presence, showing the Spirit is present in him, in a rather rough and hard background. Jesus coming to a world in need. And I thought, I like to preach that. This icon will remind me as I prepare to preach that. And I purchased it, and I brought it home, and just before I showed it to the first person, see what I got to remind me of Jesus' presence? I looked at the back, and I hadn't purchased Jesus. I had purchased John the Baptizer. Now, the good thing about that is it is the message I needed to hear. And I didn't even hear it as I was buying John the baptizer is the one who is not the Savior, but who comes to prepare the way for the Savior. When I pray in my office, if I glance towards that icon, I'm reminded, Jim, you're not the Savior. Jim, it's not your job to ultimately turn hearts and minds toward Jesus. Jim, it is your job to proclaim that Jesus comes. The job of Christ's people in this world is to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the assurance that by the grace of God, by no doing of our own, Jesus comes to us, enters our life, and doesn't just bring water, Jesus brings the living Spirit of God. 
As I was thinking about that, I got to think about this crazy COVID Christmas year. I've run into some folks already that are incredibly disappointed and very anxious. Their family will not be having their usual Christmas. The things they count on in our special every year, from their time in the pew to their time at the dinner table to their time around the tree, those things won't be there in the way they usually are. And if you try to recreate them, basically, in most cases, it's just going to make us want them more. It's revealing to me how much I think Christmas is me. It's up to me to bring the spirit. It's up to me to continue the nostalgia. It's up to me to make sure the whole thing is always the same. But it's not up to me to be the savior. The Savior is the one who comes in and says, no matter what your world is right now, I come. No matter how dark your world is right now, Jesus says, I am the light. No matter how separated we feel this year, Jesus is the one who says, you are my body together. I've made you one. The things I'd like to recreate, the things I'd like to have happen, not going to happen this year. But there's a gift in these strange years that comes from the reminder that it is not the trappings that make Christmas. They're fun. They warm our hearts. But the real warmth, the real fire, the real light and love of Christmas is the one who comes after the announcement, after the program, after the meal, and during them all, the living Jesus who comes. Many years ago, a young child in our congregation was battling cancer. She was six years old and she'd battled it half of her life. We got towards, towards Christmas and she didn't get to see that Christmas. She didn't get the usual dinner, the usual filled stocking, the usual Christmas carols. How do you bury a child at Christmas time? That's just not Christmas. At the same time in our sanctuary, we left the manger there. We left the baby doll, the sign of Christ coming in smallness in humility, in darkness. The tree, of course, stayed up. The lights continued to glisten. But when it came to prayer, we didn't pray that we would be the ones to change the world. We prayed that he who follows our teachings, who is in our word, who comes no matter what. We prayed that the one we point to would make a difference. And we close the prayers, be near us, Lord Jesus. We ask thee to stay close by us forever and love us, we pray. Bless all the dear children in your tender care and fit us for heaven to live with thee there. People were comforting the family. 
people sought to have some spirit of there can be Christmas in the middle of this pain. People sought for it to be better. And Jesus came in them and through them. In the grief, the pain, and the darkness, Jesus came and took a part in fitting us all for heaven, pointing us towards eternity, towards the family that lives forever, towards the Christ who came that first Christmas, who comes to us each day, and who promises to be totally present in the world to come. Once again, be near us, Lord Jesus. We ask thee to stay close by us forever and love us, we pray. Bless all the dear children in your tender care and fit us for heaven to live with thee there. May your Advent and your Christmas, as different as it may be in this COVID year, be filled with the blessing of the Christ who comes. Amen. cried out in the wilderness saying, prepare the way of the Lord. And so we worship, we march toward justice, we roll up our sleeves, we plant trees for our children, we make art, we choose hope, we gather at the table, we sing loudly with joy, we share stories and wisdom, we celebrate children, we fall together, we rise together, we love together. We do all these things because we believe that God loves us so much that God shows up here. So we prepare and prepare for that next beautiful day. May it be so, amen. Let us pray for this weary world, responding to each petition when I say, O oh God, be gracious to us, with the words from today's psalm, in mercy restore us. We pray. 
Come to the church, O faithful God. Be with Bishop Ahrens as he prepares for retirement, and be with Bishop Berger as he prepares to serve as interim bishop for La Crosse Area Synod. Watch over the pastors of your church and all who minister. Show us what is your way and where your paths lead. Awaken all the baptized to the guidance of your Holy Spirit. O oh God, be gracious to us. In mercy, restore us. Come to the Jewish people, O oh covenant God, at this their festival of Hanukkah. End the world's anti-Semitism and bring peace to your holy city of Jerusalem. O oh God, be gracious to us. In mercy, restore us. Come to the earth, O creating God, as the seasons change, protect all that lives, mend the wounds of environmental damage, restore balance to ecosystems. O God, be gracious to us. In mercy, restore us. Come to the nations, O sovereign God. Inspire government officials to strive for peace in all nations and between countries. Remember the people of Afghanistan and Ethiopia. Guide the nations toward cooperative efforts when facing global issues. O oh God, be gracious to us. In mercy, restore us. Come to our country, O oh righteous God. Teach us how to end discrimination, to value diversity. Bring political parties into helpful and productive conversation with one another. Assist the unemployed and uphold people with physical and developmental disabilities. O oh God, be gracious to us. In mercy, restore us. Come to all who are facing the coronavirus, O oh, compassionate God. Protect the vulnerable, heal the sick, embrace the dying, sustain medical workers, prepare a vaccine, bring an end to the division, the grief, the suffering. O oh, God, be gracious to us. In mercy, restore us. Come to all who suffer, O oh, merciful God. Empower us to feed the hungry in our nation and around the world. Gather into your healing embrace all those who are afraid, lonely, sick, or struggling with depression and isolation. Especially we commend to you those we pray for now. O oh God, be gracious to us. In mercy, restore us. Come, O oh tender-hearted God, to each and every one of us. Receive the prayers that we hold in our hearts and that we name aloud to you in the silence of this moment. O oh God, be gracious to us. In mercy, restore us. Come to us, O eternal God, as you came to the saints. We remember Saint Nicholas in his care for children and those enduring poverty. Bring us with all of your saints through our wilderness and into the fulfillment of your promises. O oh God, be gracious to us. In mercy, restore us. Come near to us, O oh God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite you to take time to offer the sign of peace to one another. 
Again, marking one another and saying, you are God's beloved child. And if you are worshiping alone today, hear me say to you, you are God's beloved child. May the peace of Christ reign in you always. And I also invite you at this time to consider your, your gifts and offerings to Bethany. Thank you for supporting our ministry through these many months of, of worshiping online. And though we pray and hope that we will be together soon, we are preparing ourselves for it to still be many months before we are worshiping together. We wait with eager anticipation for the day when it is safe to be together again. So thank you for continuing to support Bethany and its ministries because ministry continues. Uh, it just continues in a new way, in a different way. Uh, and so thank you. And as you do that, we will sing together hymn 253, He Came Down. the offering prayer. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, and through these gifts the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed our duty and our delight to give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you dreamed of a world that would be good, of mountains, valleys, oceans, of the changing seasons, of laughter and the magic of music, of a creation united with you in love. You dreamed of this world, O oh God, and you breathed it into being. And when we who bear your image in this world turned away from you, you did not turn from us. Rather, in love, you held fast to your dream, working, shaping, and suffering to make it a reality. And so we praise you, O oh God. Ever present God, your prophets dreamed of the day when you would tear open the heavens and come down. And in Christ, their dream became a reality. Come down now, O oh Lord, we pray, upon this bread and this cup, and make them be for us the very body and blood of Jesus Christ. We remember that, at, that Jesus took the bread, he gave thanks and he broke it and gave it for all to eat, saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
And again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for them all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Creating God, send your spirit upon your people, that we too may dream your dream of the lion laying down with the lamb, of justice rolling like a mighty river, of swords beaten into plowshares, of prisoners set free. May we dream your dream, and then as we wake, empower us with your spirit to work, to make your dream a reality. Form us with your dream, everlasting God, we pray. Amen gathered into one, sharing that dream of God by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Leaders at home, take the bread and offer it to all who are gathered, saying, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. And take the cup and offer it to all who are gathered, saying, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. May this, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us, and we rejoice. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive now the blessing. As you go, may you have the strength to dream, wild dreams of justice and peace and joy that overflows. May you have the humanity to listen to the dreams of others. May you have the confidence to trust that the God who heard the cries of the Israelites in Egypt hears your dreams and cries as well. And may you have the conviction to return to this worship space, for our best dreams are those that we dream together. In the name of God, the original dreamer, Jesus, the dream come true, and the Holy Spirit enables us to be those who dream. Go in peace. Go in love. Amen. Go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us for worship today, and we will see you again next week. Until we do meet again, God be with you. God is with you. There's so much sorrow here, so much shame and hurt and fear. And this grief feels like the ache is never ending. Take a breath. 
the night is long, can't find sleep. Where's peace gone? It's so hard to breathe. It's time to dream fierce dreams, like Mary did. It's time to dream fish.